Hello, Few Candy here, and welcome to a special episode of City Skylines. And today we are doing a bit of a how to transform your vanilla assets session. And the main focus of this episode is going to be based around one of my absolute favorite mods, and that is Bob, the prop and tree replacer or beautify our builds. And anyone who's watched my Origin series will know how much I love this mod because I use it as a verb pretty much all the time. Right, let's bob out the car parking spaces. Like, bob that out. I'm going to bob out these props. Let's just bob this one out then. I'm going to bob off the trees. Now, alongside Bob, I would recommend also downloading a few other additional quality of life mods just to make your detailing experience a little bit more all rounded. And I am using a lot of these today as well, although I won't be touching on them in any great detail. So the ones that I'd really recommend are Fine Road Anarchy, Move It, Prop Line Tool, Prop and Tree Anarchy or Prop Anarchy, Tree Anarchy, Find It and Prop the Growables. Now, if you're interested in knowing more about these other quality of life mods, Overcharged Egg has also released a video this week going over the top 10 quality of life and game improvement mods for City Skylines in 2022. A link to that is in the description below. Please do go and check it out because it will give you lots of great information on those other quality of life mods. But for today, we are focusing on Bob. So when you load up Bob, you will see a symbol like this, which says Bob, funnily enough. If you have Unified UI, you can put it up into your Unified UI panel, as I have up here. I don't have the rest of my mods that I usually have in this, because I'm trying to demonstrate what can be done on just a few limited mods in terms of detailing. So I've got my Bob up here. So in order to activate it, you can just click there or you can use the shortcut, which is Alt B, and that will change your cursor to the Bob cursor, as you can see like that. So the first function I want to go over is the map replacing tool. So if I click now on the map, we can see here that we have got a list of all of the props and all of the trees which are present in this map. So I have now added a few in because actually this map that I'm on here only comes with conifers. So I've just tried to make it a little bit more interesting by adding a few extras. So what we can see here is a list of all of the trees that are present on this map. And if there were any props as well, you'd find them in this menu here too. There aren't any props on this map, so we are just dealing with trees at the moment. So what you can use this for is to completely change the look and feel of your map. So here we've got an awful lot of conifers on this map. And if we zoom in and go a little bit closer to them, all of the type of tree that I'm clicking on here will be highlighted in pink, as you can see. If I change this now and we go to some other ones, we can see, there we go, we've got our beaches in there. We should also have some pines, a couple of these other tree variants, and some bushes in here somewhere as well. Yeah, you can see them there, the little pink dots. So the type of tree that you're on will be highlighted. Clearly conifers are the majority, so I'm going to use that as the example here. Now on the right hand side here, we have a complete list of all of the trees that we have in our game. So I don't have any workshop assets active in this game. We are just using vanilla assets. So that's what the V stands for here. If you had workshop as well, they would be present in this list, but without that V in front. And you can also, if you want to hide vanilla, you can also click this button here to get rid of all your vanilla assets. So you're only looking at what you have downloaded from the workshop, which is a useful little tool there. And you can, of course, use the search function if you wanted to. So instead of these conifers, I'm just going to completely change it up. And let's say I'm going to do some bamboo. So if I search for bamboo in here, up comes the two different bamboo options. And we can click on them. You can see what the tree looks like on the right hand side here as well. So you get a little bit of a preview. And then once you've decided that that is what you want to change your conifer to, you can go ahead and do that by clicking this green tick in the middle here. And that will change every conifer on the entire map to a bamboo tree. <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> so that's completely changed the map. Now, this is a great tool in particular. If you wanted to go for an autumn theme, for example, you could change all of your base trees on the map to autumn colored themes from the workshop, for example. Now, I don't actually want it to be bamboo because I'm a big fan of the boreal theme. So we can see here it says bamboo, but it was conifer. We've got a symbol there to show that it has been replaced. We can click onto any of the other trees and you can still see that symbol there. If we want to revert that back to what it was, we can simply click the undo button here and that will still work if you've exited Bob. So I've exited Bob here. We'll go back into it, click into the map and you can still see that symbol and you can still revert back very easily like that. And so that really is the map replacement function. It would work exactly the same if you did have props on the map. You could change all of those within there as well. 
So now I'm just going to go ahead and lay out a really basic road structure so that I can demonstrate some of the other functions of Bob. Okay, so the first function I want to go over is just the general replacing or removing of props, as in the namesake. So we have got three commercial assets here. We've got two of exactly the same and then another one which has some of the same props as these two. So we've got this bin that you'll notice is the same across all. There are car parking spaces as well, which are across all of these assets. So let's just select the middle laundromat. So again, in order to come into Bob, we can either click on the Bob button here or we go to the shortcut, which is Alt B. And you can change that shortcut in the settings if you do have clashes. So Forest Brush, actually, the default for that is a clash with Bob. So you can change it if you go to the settings. So in here, we've got the hotkey option with Alt B set up. And you can, of course, change that to whatever you would like to. A couple of other useful things in the settings as well is in the bit visual effects. You can also prevent ruining by trees or ruining by props. So that is the ground markings that you put down when you put down either a prop or a tree quite useful and also thinner electrical wires if you would so wish to do that. And in the middle here is configurations where you can save various different configurations if you would like to so that you're not always using the same Bob settings in every single city that you have. Although I'm not going to go into this settings in great detail in this, I'm just going to focus on how you use Bob. So having opened up our Bob option by either clicking on the symbol or doing Alt B, we can then click on an asset. And here we go, exactly the same as the map. We have a few different menu options here. So first up, we've got the props list, which is every single prop that is contained within this asset. And that is either removable or replaceable. And just for reference, some elements of the building and props will not be removable or replaceable. So it's not always a given that it will be in there, but anything that can possibly be removed or replaced will be in this list. So you first up have props, you then have your tree menu here, and we've only got bushes on the laundromat. And then you also have the option to look at both trees and props all in one go in one list here. So starting off with the props. So there are a few different options. So let's say we want to get rid of these car parking spaces. Maybe we just don't want them there. Maybe we actually want to use Move It and move these buildings right up close or another building right next to it. And we don't want the car parking spaces in there or the bushes maybe. Um, so what we can do is click on the asset. Let's go to the car parking spaces. And you'll see when we click on that, that they're not only highlighted in this asset, but also within this other laundromat that you can see over here. And that is because we have this menu selected, which is all props of this type in these buildings. So every single laundromat that we put in, this will be impacting the props within that. So at the time of recording this, there is no way within Bob to split it out into just this individual laundromat and not this one. So that is something to bear in mind when you are replacing any props is that it is going to affect every single instance of that building in your save game. The other option that you can see here as well is all props of this type in all buildings. So when I click on this, you can see here as well, we've got the central hotel, so a different asset, but it has those same parking spaces, the same parking spaces prop in them as we can see in this laundromat. So therefore they are also highlighted in pink. So there's a few different options for this. We could either just stick to just the ones on the laundromat. And if we want to remove them, what we can do here is either bring this probability down to zero, or you can click this handy hide this item button, which sets the probability to zero for us, and then just click the green tick. So once you've done that, you can see over here that you've got that replacement mark there. So there is a replacement currently applied for these buildings for that particular prop. Now let's say we want to undo that. We just simply click the red button here and go back. And let's say actually we've decided, do you know what? I'm going to only use parking lot roads or big parking lots for my city. And I don't want to use any of these generic parking lot spaces. What you can do is come back into this menu, which is all props of this type in all buildings. And let's say we're going to remove them from absolutely everything. Hit this button to get probability down to zero. They're still going to show on there for the moment, but as soon as you hit this apply green button, they have been removed. And that is the case on every asset across your city. So I'm just going to fly over here to the mall as well. And you'll see if we if we go back to this, let's say we undo this option here. And because it's applied to all buildings, I would add, I'm now on a different asset and I've undone it. And it has undone it on the laundromats over there as well. This is previously what the mall looked like. So it is literally every asset across your city. So I'd use that with a little bit of caution, unless there is really a prop that you just do not want to see anywhere. For example, car parking spaces. 
Now there is one other option as well for selecting assets and that is this menu button here which is individual props within these buildings. So as you can see here there are actually four different car parking spaces put in to the laundromat. So let's say actually I only want to remove the front one because maybe I want to put a planter or something out the front. So I can do that, just whack the probability down to zero or press this button, click the green one and that's got rid of just that front car parking space which is quite useful for adding little extra details in as you would so wish. So maybe you've got a tree and you want to put a road through it. You can do that to just an individual tree. So for example, let's go over to this park now to show that in action. I'm going to bring that out with Road Anarchy on. So it's now cutting actually through the park asset. And what we can see here is we've got three trees on the road. In fact, four trees on the road. But we don't want to get rid of all of the trees. Let's click on Bob and go into this park. And then we want to make sure that we are on trees here so that we've got these trees to remove from this road. And then if we go into the individual trees within this building, we can then go through to find the trees that we want to get rid of that are sitting on the road and whack the probability down to zero and click tick. And then it's just a case of going through and finding each one of those trees that you want to remove and repeating that action over again. So there we go. I've just removed those individual trees and kept all of the other ones in the park. So now we have this park, which is an actually a slightly interesting shape and we can use different roads around it that we couldn't use before. Now, of course, the other thing that we might want to do here, because maybe the trees don't really fit with the theme of the map or you're using custom trees everywhere. Of course, come into Bob and let's go back to all trees of type of this type in this building and we can replace those trees with something else that we prefer. So let's say because this is a boreal theme, let's maybe go for a conifer. And then instead of hitting probability zero, just to replace it, we'll click on that conifer, click the green arrow and that has replaced that type of tree in the park. And then therefore now it fits in a little bit better with that Boreal theme. So that is a bit of a lesson in how you either remove assets using the probability slider or the hide this asset button there. And also to replace just by simply selecting a different type of prop or tree and clicking the green button in order to replace it. There we go. We've got some nice apple trees instead of bushes on our laundromats now. So the next thing that Bob does is the moving of props within a certain asset. So again, if we click on prop or we'll use our shortcut and let's select this Art Deco apartment because this is a perfect example of it. Now these benches are very big and sat within this very tight courtyard. And let's say actually we want to give them a nice garden and spread those benches out. So there's a couple of ways that we could obviously do that. Firstly, we could come in, find the beer garden benches, lower the probability down and get rid of them. And then we could use find it if we have it to find the beer garden benches and then maybe place them out outside and do our own garden decorations that way. But the other thing you could do is use the offset function within Bob to move them. So what I'd like to do is not use move both of them at one time, but actually move them individually. So I'm going to make sure we've got props selected there. We'll go to the individual items. And so now we can click on either one of these beer garden benches. Remembering, of course, that this is going to do it to every single instance of this asset within this map file. Now, you could, of course, do all of these props in all of these buildings, um, but that's going to be weird for moving it. So I wouldn't recommend that because <laughs> it'll move some benches and some weird props into very weird places. So let's firstly take this bench. And what we can do is just use slider to move this along to move it to any other position that we want. So let's bring it out into this garden. Let's move it across here. And then let's also turn the angle round to a nice 90 degrees. And if we can't get it exactly just sliding it along, you can just type it in there and hit enter and it will do it for you. Now I'm looking at that and going, it's not quite in the center of those windows. So let's just move it slightly further and you can roll the mouse wheel as well. If you hover over these to do it with a little bit more precision, it will do it step by step for you. So then once you are ready, you do need to remember to click that green button and apply and save the changes. Then we can go to the other beer garden and do exactly the same thing on the other side. And then of course, click apply. And there we go. We've got our benches moved and that has happened to all of these Art Deco apartments. So let's not forget that. So yeah, so there we go. We have just moved those props completely out of the way and opened it up. So we've got more detailing opportunities there. Now, the next thing I want to show you on Bob is the probability slider, which is particularly useful. I find these zoo park assets, which is what I'm using as the example here. So I quite often like to use the Park Life assets for little extra pops of detail, 
not in necessarily the park areas. So for example, this little zoo cafe here, using this as just a small cafe next to a metro station, for example, or next to a plaza. But the thing that shines out in it is it has this massive great sign that says zoo in front of it. So it doesn't look particularly realistic from that sense. Now we can use Bob to change that without completely removing it from every asset. So let's go into Bob on the asset. Now within props, you can see here we have this zoo sign. And what I'm going to do here is just lower the probability down just a tiny bit um, so that it disappears. So we're just setting it at 77%, for example, here. And we'll click apply and save changes. And then what we have is a version of the zoo cafe without the great massive glaring red hole sign that is that says zoo there. So it's a little bit more realistic for being placed as a small cafe asset in and around a metro station like this. So now because we only set the probability to 77%, it does mean that we could place another one of these assets in elsewhere in the city. So let's say we actually want to place one of them in a zoo further down the line when we're building it. And we can get one with a zoo sign in it. So you'll see I'll put in a few here and there's one without and three that is with. And let's just say you replace one down as well. If you do have move it, a little tip for that is to click on the building and use the reset objects option. And you can keep resetting it until that zoo sign disappears, which it will if you're at 77%. Hopefully one in every four clicks will remove it for you. And what that means is that you have the freedom to use your zoo park cafe within the zoo, still with the zoo sign on it, but also use it for detailing elsewhere without this massive great zoo sign, uh, throwing off the detailing around it. Now the final other function of Bob that I want to show you as well is when we click on roads. Now we do of course now have the vanilla function where we can change trees on roads. So that is a big game changing aspect I find um, of that update that we had around the airport's DLC time where you can just click and do that. Otherwise it was just Bob that did that before. But Bob has some other really useful functions for roads as well. So let's click on this tram road here. So what we can see here is that actually on a road like this tram road, there are lots and lots and lots of props. Obviously no trees on this one, but there are an awful lot of props. So all of these arrows and everything counts as a prop on this road. So let's say actually I want to get rid of arrows on one particular junction for whatever reason. Maybe it's a small junction and you just don't want to have the road markings there. You can of course come in here. You could get rid of all arrows on every single road in your city if you wanted to by using the all props of this type in all networks. You could replace it on every part of every tram road by using this option um, or you could go into the individual props within these networks and that is where you can then find a particular arrow that you're looking for. So let's find this right arrow here that we can see. And if we keep going through them, there we go, that one's highlighted now. So I just want to get rid of just that one arrow. So I'm going to click that button, click the green, and it's gone. And let's say we want to also get rid of just the left arrow here too. We'll find that one that's glowing within the individual objects. Hit that and click green to get rid of it. And there we go, we've got rid of our arrows at this end of the tram road. But as you can see, if we go further up, we've still got them on all of the other junctions. So that's a little useful tool if you did want to detail up one area. So particularly on these small junctions here, I think it works quite well. You don't necessarily want the arrows on if you've got a nice suburban road. So you could definitely get rid of it there. Um, it also works really well for these props. Maybe you decided that you've got a few too many of them along the road. So you could go to random street prop here, lower the probability. It's already on quite low for these. You could increase it and see if you want more of those random props. Or you could reduce it right down. You can, of course, find each individual one in here as well and get rid of them. They do work in networks, I would add, across the roads. So here you can see there's actually two highlighted there. But then, yeah, you can shape your road a little bit better by getting rid of that. You can also get rid of manholes as well. Um, or you could increase the probability and have lots of manholes if you really wanted to on your road there. So let's do that. You can get rid of so many things on these roads. For example, the speed limit signs, you can get rid of those or you could change them for a different style if you had something from the workshop that you wanted to. So you could keep your vanilla roads, but change up the speed speed signs. Do exactly the same for the traffic lights as well. If you have some workshop traffic lights that you'd like to replace them with, you can find them in this list here and do that replacing. So yeah, there's lots you can do. And of course, let's not forget as well with lights. If you wanted to replace your lights for something else, so here we go, we've got our avenue lights. Let's have a little search for lights in here. Let's just say 
for some random reason we want to replace it to the amusement park street light let's go ahead and do that but then actually we don't want it spun around that way we want it spun so that it's overlooking the road perhaps so we can do that again by using the angle here we could also use offset so maybe the street lights go to the side of the road for example instead of being in the middle so that just gives you a whole different perspective on the road clearly that's a uh, very dark and you wouldn't necessarily want it to be like that but that is the type of thing that you can do with Bob you can just completely change up the look and feel of your roads there now another feature that you can find within Bob as well is this prop and tree scaling so if we just click on that let's look at this no parking sign for example here and we'll find it so we find our no parking sign and you can see again that it is highlighted in the pink color there so that you know that you've got the right asset and what you could do here is you could make it absolutely tiny if you wanted to and of course it will randomize it if you change the minimum and maximum or you could make it absolutely giant if you wanted to <laughs> and again this is not an example of a great use of this but that is what you can do with it so let's just bring that back down to one <laughs> we'll keep that at a normal scale or you can click revert just to take it back to its default state there so yeah that's a little example of what you can do and the one function I haven't touched on is height as well. So let's go back to the trash container. So if you just try and move it, it won't do it because we don't have non conforming terrain props on. However, if we go to custom, we could lift it right up, for example, like that, offset it and put it on this roof slightly if we wanted to. So let's just bring that back down. So now we have moved that trash can onto the roof. And I'm not saying that that's, again, a great use of this prop, but you can do that if you want to to completely change up this building so for example with those aircon units we could as well if we go into the individual ones let's say we just want to move one of them down onto the floor so let's do that we've got custom click there we'll move it down we'll offset it this way and then we could just like for example just put it out in the car park this side if we wanted to click the tick and there we go we've moved it so we've moved one of them off the roof down onto the floor so now what I'm going to do is show you a couple of examples of how you might apply this in practice. So let's take this raised metro station for starters and I want to run a road right through the middle of it here because frankly I think it would look cool but we've got props in the way. So what we can do is just grab our road and let's place it in using anarchy so it runs right through the centre there and we can see obviously those props in the way. So what we want to do is come in with Bob and we will find those individual planters and those individual benches because clearly there's other benches of that same variety all over so we don't want to just necessarily remove all of the benches although we could if we wanted to but if we come into here we can then go through and find the individual benches and just slowly start to remove all of them and then we'll do exactly the same with the plant pots here and then exactly the same with these trash cans so let's go through and find the trash cans that we're wanting to get rid of remove the probability down to zero and get rid of them and then we also have a light here as well so let's just find that street light and again we'll do exactly that we'll just remove that one light and now what we have is a clear road all the way through this metro station with the little kiosks on either side everything fits in reasonably well um i guess the one thing you might want to do is watch out for those street lights there so again what we could do is come into bob we can find the new street lights. We can go to prop scaling and what we can do is just reduce the height on them just a little bit so that it's not sticking into the roof there. So let's bring the maximum scale down. There we go. And we'll click exit, click tick, and that will save there on these roads. So now that street light is not clipping into the bottom of the metro station and this road through the metro station works perfectly. So the next example I want to show you is how we can transform a park into something just completely different. So this is the official park, the unique building, and yet let's use Bob to literally remove absolutely everything from it so that we're just left with the main structure. And what we can do is then use it as essentially as a statue to frame a little roundabout plaza area. So let's of course get rid of the trees as well. So there we go. We're just left with our plain structure. And of course with this, this gives you endless detail and opportunity. So if you've got find it, you've got prop line tool, prop anarchy, that sort of thing, you can come in and you can put whatever props you wanted to around this. So what I'm actually going to do with it is use move it to make it into a centerpiece of a roundabout, just like so. 
And then of course we do have extra detailing opportunities around this. So for example, we could come in and find some different type of tiles like so. And let's, uh, let's say we want to detail it up into a roundabout. Let's use perfect circles. Let's change the gap on this a little bit. And then what we can do is find the middle of the roundabout and just yeah, come in with prop line tool to completely change up the look and feel of this official park. So something along those lines, if you please, which is a complete departure to the original unique building. And another little example is in this European high school. So what I want in here is a basketball court and not all of these individual props in here. So let's go ahead and we can locate those benches. For example, uh, I'm going to remove all of those. I also don't want the tiles, so let's remove those and the street clock as well, which is in the middle there. So again, let's remove that. And then what we can do is we've got find it again. We can come in and find a basketball court detail. And now we've got this perfect little opportunity and this perfect little space in the middle of the school to start adding in our own touches of detail to it. So we'll get the basketball hoops as well and we'll place those in nicely at the edge of the court. And then there we go, we've just managed to customise this high school just a little bit. And here's a few more examples of how you can use Bob to completely transform your vanilla assets. So for today, that is going to be it. And I really hope you feel like you've learned a little something about using Bob in your builds now. It is absolutely one of my top favourite mods. I love it to bits. So please do go onto that workshop and show it some love for the creators, Algonon and Chameleon, top-notch mod creators. And like I said, detailing mods don't get much better than this. So do go onto the workshop and show them some love. And if you have enjoyed the video, please do whack that like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments. And if you're keen to see any more tutorial videos along this lines, do let me know. Otherwise for today, that is it. And happy bobbin. I'll catch you next time. Bye bye.